Okay, so in the previous episode, we've covered the topics of the IFC spatial structure and IFC relationships. In this episode, we'll talk about another kind of hierarchy, the IFC classes inheritance hierarchy, and we'll also understand more about attributes and how they're different from property sets. There are hundreds of IFC classes, and we don't need to know them all. Some we have already encountered, like the IFC project, IFC building story, or IFC building elements. And we need to organize all these entities somehow. So the first thing to note is that IFC classes can be divided in two main categories, rooted classes and non-rooted classes. Rooted classes inherit from a class called IFC root. Let's search for IFC root. Looking at the 4x2 schema, you can read here it's four attributes, the global ID, an owner history, name, and a description. The type of value that these attributes can take is specified here. You can click on each one of these and see how these should be set. The cardinality means whether the attribute is mandatory or not. So the global ID is mandatory, whereas the owner history, the name, and the description are optional attributes. This does not mean you should not fill them out. You should do so and it will allow you to track your items better. So an IFC root has three subclasses. If we click on the first one, IFC object definition, and then IFC object, let's now click on IFC product, IFC element, and then IFC building element. We can find classes that talk to us more like the wall, windows, beams, floors, roofs, so on and so forth. A good thing to note is that in the 4x2 schema, this class is called IFC building element and this will change to IFC built element. If we click on attribute inheritance here, we see a long table now. This table tells us that the IFC building element class inherits from the IFC root, the IFC object definition, the IFC object, the IFC product, the IFC element. So we inherit all the attributes and relationships of our parent classes. Now let's go back to Blender. Here we can clear our console to have something fresh. Let's minimize this a bit. Let's now click on wall and on our properties panel, clicking on object properties, we can read the IFC class. It's an IFC wall with a predefined type as a solid wall. We could reassign this as a different class, but we don't need to since this is well assigned. Now the attributes here are a bit wrong. The name is all right. The description is missing. Description should be filled out. The object type should be empty because the predefined type is already set. If this was set as user defined, because you wouldn't find a better description for your wall, then you would further denote it through this object type attribute. So let's save this. Now the IFC construction type is a relationship and if I click on select similar type we would find all the objects that are of the same construction type. So all these walls are basically the same type. If we scroll down and let's just hide IFC object material for now. The IFC object property sets are different to our attributes. And this is very important to follow. Uh, if you do not find your attributes as part of these templates that are given in the schema, then you would create your own custom property set where you add your uh, custom attributes and custom uh, values. You can see uh, that we have inherited P sets this means that the three p-sets actually come 
from the wall type. So these parameters are basically of the instance that is selected here and the other ones belong to the type of the, the object. We also have quantity sets which contain all the uh, quantities relevant for our wall. This is named QTO wall based quantities because this is also a standard template. Okay, let's try and code everything we've seen so far. In order to retrieve all of the uh, rooted entities, let's create a variable called rooted entities and file by type IFC root will return a huge set containing all the rooted entities. If you want to see what's inside of here, it's a long, long list, sorry, it's a list, not a set. Now, what if we want to know which one of these subclasses is uh, an IFC building element? We're going to use the isA method, and it can be used in two different ways. If no argument is passed, then we'll get the IFC class name. And if uh, an IFC class name is passed, then it'll return a true or a false. So let's create an empty set for that. IFC building element entities empty set. So if we look through our rooted entities and check if the entity is a IFC building element, then we're going to append that to our set. Append the name, sorry, with our empty entity is a function. Um, I have a small typo, so let's fix that. If entity is a IFC building element, IFC building element entities add entity is a now let's print what we have in here so for ifc class name in ifc building element entities i know this is really long to write but it's easier so that we know what we're doing print ifc class name Sweet. So we have uh, some columns, uh, some stairs, beams, railings, windows, whatever. Since we have a wall, let's create a variable called my wall, and um, let, let's search by ID. Let's click on this wall and uh, look for its global ID. Edit. Let's copy this file by id oh it has to be pasted as a string so this wall has a global id this wall has a name this wall has a description um, no it doesn't this wall has an owner history no it does not what else does this wall have it may have a tag Let's check the predefined type. It's a solid wall, that's cool. Let's check if the object type attribute is empty. It's not, so let's make it empty. Now, these attributes uh, are those that we saw in our uh, interface here. And so if we want to get the construction type, we would need to access the is type by and it returns this IFC rel defines by type class and if we want to look at the relating no sorry let's take the first one in the set and look at the relating type we'll find an IFC wall type so um, this wall type will have all these related objects. In our interface, it was the same as clicking on select similar and finding all the walls that have 
the similar construction type. Okay, let's check what this lab is. Although we already know it's an IFC slab, let's now check if this lab is a rooted entity. Let's check if this lab is a IFC building element. Okay, so far so good. IFC product. So it's all true. An IFC slab inherits from an IFC product, an IFC building element, and an IFC root class.